welcome to the fourth episode on inner product spaces in this session our main thrust will be the so called cauchy schwarz and nick warlody okay you may remember when i introduced inner product space in the first lecture i said so far we dealt with only a vector space with algebraic properties but you want to give some geometric notions such as the length of a vector and the angle between a vector etc then i illustrated with r2 and r3 to give some some kind of an idea why we want to introduce the inner product spaces right so we want to take it off so now that we have defined inner product spaces of course over r now we want to talk about how to define the length of a vector and the angle between two vectors okay and the key ingredient for that especially for angles is the so called cauchy schwarz inequality which is one of the most important inequalities next only to triangle inequality okay let's get started yeah this is my youtube channel email id you can download the list of the videos on my channel from this side you can also scan this and in that side search for list of videos the list gives a descriptions the links of videos and videos are arranged in preferred order order of viewing and i will also periodically update them the updates will be announced through the post in my channel so maybe you should subscribe yeah okay so let us get started okay oh, we are already started right i forgot okay so inner product spaces so let uh, remember all our inner product spaces so far are real inner product spaces okay ips okay so far ours are always real right now i want to talk about given a vector v and v i want to talk about length or norm of a vector which is we usually denote by this notice that when v equal to r2 with the standard dot product i don't know whether i started the recording yeah okay <laughs> the standard dot product then using pythagoras theorem we define length of the vector x y okay norm of v to be x square plus y square and we also generalize to r3 with this dot product if the vector is x y z the length of the vector is x square plus y square plus z square to the power half notice that this is nothing other than v dot v and it's a root right so generalized by this we can carry it over to rn okay if v is x1 to xn and with the standard dot product okay we define this is the definition now okay this is x dot x to the power half notice that x dot x is non negative therefore this is a unique non negative square root top the number x dot x yeah and this by definition is something as an x1 squared plus x1 squared to the power half root and here we there is no geometric interpretation for this right we know for x1 x sorry r2 and r3 pythagoras theorem tells us okay that seems to be a very correct definition but r and what we do we generalize this is what mathematicians do okay look at special cases look at what are the things which hold then use it to generalize it okay this is what we have done so now that you are done so we should suppose now v is in arbitrary in our product space over r and given a vector v how do you think now you should define the length go back if you have seen r2 r3 and rn you should know what it is it's by definition v dot v and square root you understand sorry not v dot v <laughs> let me see v inner product v square root okay this is the the inner product i mean this is it right 
how do I define this? Just because I was motivated by looking at R2 and R3, generalized to Rn, and the same thing I am adapting. Is that clear to you? And intuitively, how do I think of it? So, if this is my V, this is my vector V, okay, length of the vector is this, from here to here. This is what we denote by length of the vector V. Right, so it's a, in some sense length of the vector v is we think of this is the distance from zero to v. Okay, this is the position vector. Okay, so if you are more towards in the first quadrant, this is the position vector, and this this, this length is what we denote by norm v. Okay, so we are defined length of your or norm of your vector. So, this this is usually called length or norm of the vector v, in v where this is an inner part space. Okay. Pause. Review. Proceed. Before even I go further, let me give a trade secret you will see I am going to use it always okay when we want to talk about okay when we wish to deal with norm in an inner product space it is wiser always to deal with now v squared which is v dot v because now v came from dot product in dot product there's a lot more structure okay bilinearity etc etc symmetry those things can be used okay keep this as a thing you will see i'm going to play this okay i am going to use this trick later okay now now that we have defined length how do i define angle between two vectors u and v in a vector space, in an inner part space, okay. I cannot define an arbitrary, any arbitrary vector space, it has to be an inner part space, right. Now, let us go back again, let us look at, for inspiration, let us look at example. Inspiration comes from R2 with the dot product, okay. So, let u be equal to x1, y1 v b equal to x2 y2 then we saw u dot v is x1 x2 plus y1 y2 this is the algebraic definition but we thought we found this is nothing other than norm of u length of u length of v into cos theta where theta is the angle between u and v Okay, this is how we motivated in the very first lecture. Do you understand that? Yeah. So, now, let us see. Are you, are you following? So, in an inner product space, in an arbitrary inner product space, V, how do we like define angle now? I would like to define the same way, inner product U V equal to norm U into norm b into cos theta. If I can write like this, then I will define theta to be the angle. You understand that? Are you, see, if I want to prove this, some such thing, right? Play with it, okay, do not be put off, okay? Because people don't want you to think, they just want you to accept why it is true. Okay, that's let us do this. Suppose this is true. Let us look at okay. This is true statement. Okay, if this is true, if this is true, then what happens? Modulus of u in a product B okay will be less than equal to norm u into norm B, it's equal to and modulus of cos theta. But you know for Theta real, cos theta is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, this is less than or equal to norm u into norm u. 
Okay, if this were true, this should happen. Do you understand this? I am working backwards as usual. Right? Are you following? Okay. So, question is, does it happen? Is this true? What is true? Modulus of inner product uv is less than or equal to norm u into norm b. Okay? Right. Are you following? Okay. So let us check in the case of R2 we already know in R2 it is true. Okay. In Rn is it true? Okay. This is our forefathers knew something about what is called Lagrange's identity. Let me just do it like this. Okay. So in Rn let x and y be vectors here and x equal to usual as usual x1 x2 xn now i am writing in row notation but if you want you can also write it as a column vector okay xi yj minus xj yi whole squared with i less than equal to j do you understand that just check okay work this out for n equal to 2 and 3 just to make sure that you are understanding right for example x1 y2 and x1 y3 and here that's it the thing are you following right when i come to x2 <coughs> i has to be less than c therefore there's nothing do you follow that please check it okay pause review proceed just to make sure that you understand this okay but what i want to do is not important so this fellow xi yj minus xj yi whole squared i less than j this is equal to half of x i y j minus x j y i whole square for all i and j right when i equal to j notice that this will be x i y i minus x i y i that is zero it's not contributing and when i is less than j then i can also interchange j and i okay is this clear okay when i equal to j the term is r0 okay when i equal not equal to j then there is a thing which is repeated j okay x j y y i minus the same thing are you following please notice that when i equal to j i am going to get x i y j minus x j y i when i is greater than j what do i get i get x i y j minus x j y i right this is exactly negative of that where i and j are changed are you following this please these are the things you know people don't they simply accept it okay people don't want you to think okay please understand right so this term will appear there okay if you want again go back to uh, what i said n equal to three case understand it's important to understand don't worry whether it will come for exam or not you should have to learn to think okay right now i can work this out therefore this is half of okay xi summation is there xi yj minus xj yi squared so let us expand this this is going to let us keep the half out okay then i am going to get xi squared yj squared my this is plus xj squared yi squared minus 2 xi yi xj yj do you accept it this is just ordinary quadratic thing for ing for all ing yeah right but this fellow you notice that as i and j vary this is nothing other than okay xi yj square two times this this summation okay over i and j is equal to this are you following yeah right and what is this this summation is nothing other than okay x i y i is modulus inner part of x y this also inner part of x y do you understand this yeah therefore this do do get these two 
cancels with half therefore I am going to get xi squared yj squared this is j i and j varying 1 to n minus modulus of xy whole squared this is just inner part of xy whole squared it's a real number therefore I don't know to put modulus it, I can as well put it for a later purpose I am doing that is that all right okay now what do I know about this this object is greater than or equal to 0 this object is greater than or equal to 0 right therefore this is greater than or equal to 0 right but what is this this is nothing other than xi squared into yi squared right this you have to change as j then xi squared yi squared i equal to 1 to n and this is norm x squared into norm y squared okay is greater than or equal to modulus of xy squared right and you should remember if you are following my uh, real analysis course in various places you would already know if 0 is less than okay these are non-negative numbers then a is less than or equal to b if and only if a squared less than or equal to b squared okay right therefore this is norm modulus of inner part x y is less than or equal to norm x into norm y so in rn okay this is true okay pause review proceed this pure algebra please go through it luckily this is known as uh, this whatever i wrote this identity is known as lagrange's okay identity okay so since already known this inequality was easily arrived at okay so what have we shown we have seen that in rn okay modulus of x y sorry this is ordinary dot product so i should have written modulus x dot y i'm sorry for that it's okay so modulus of x dot y is less than equal to norm x into norm y this is known as the cauchy schwarz inequality for rn of course okay right that means what that means my x dot y lies between minus 1 and plus 1 because uh, not that sorry x dot y by norm x into norm y lies between x and 1 okay assume the x is not 0 y is not 0 therefore norm x is x dot x and its square root this cannot be 0 right so I should have observed that remember norm of x is 0 if and only if x is 0 why because this is 0 if and only if norm x squared is 0 that is if and only if x dot x is 0 that is happens if only x is 0 do you see that I already used it twice here also what did I do I took norm x squared and to norm y squared then I used it all right remember my trade secret okay go slow there is no hurry right now what you know is cos okay map 0 to pi to r okay on the interval minus 1 to plus 1 this is a continuous bijection right that is cos at 0 is 1 and cos at pi is 0 and this is monotone decreasing right and this is a bijection what does it mean by a bijection therefore if you give me any real number t between minus 1 to plus 1 there is a unique theta in 0 to pi so that cos theta equal to t do you understand this yeah okay that theta okay this theta is called the angle between u and x and y so i have x non-zero this is y non-zero this angle theta you understand that 
So this is an R and now I define. I know in R2 we had already proved the formula x dot the inner product u dot v is x1 y1 plus x2 y2 that is nothing other than length of vector u and length of vector v into cos theta where theta is the angle between u and v. Now R and I have proved it. This is the way now we are defining. Are you following? So we are defining. We define the angle theta between non-zero vectors u and u and v by setting okay u v by norm of u into norm of v to be cos theta. This is again I should write as x dot y norm of x into norm of y. So what I am trying to say please you don't get confused okay. So in any inner product says we not not necessarily even final dimension. You understand that? If I have proved okay modulus of u v is less than equal to norm u into norm v okay therefore this object u v that uh, the inner part u v by norm u into norm v lies between 1 and minus 1. Therefore there exists a unique theta in 0 to pi so that cos theta equal to this number. So what I have shown now please pay attention do not get psyched. Okay. So what I have shown now I have shown that if at all I can prove modulus of inner product u v is less than equal to norm u into norm v for any inner product spaces I can define cos theta by equation cos theta equal to inner product u v by norm u into norm v. These are non-zero vectors u and v. You understand that? So we are defined angle. So but then to prove that what do I need? I have to prove that inequality. What is that inequality? Modulus of inner product u v is less than equal to norm u into norm v. That is known as cauchy schwarz inequality. That's what we want to prove now. Okay? Is that clear? Okay, let's go back. So we prove this. This is the theorem. This is known as Cauchy for inequality. Okay. Let V be any of course real inner part of space. Okay. Right? Maybe I will write it as add out there. Okay, then for any u and v in v modulus of inner part u v is less than equal to modulus sorry norm of u into norm of v okay this is true for all for all u and v given any u and v this is a true statement okay Okay, first observe if u is 0 or v is 0, okay, inner part of uv is 0. Why? Because suppose u is 0, then I can write it as 0 times u. Therefore, 0 times uv, but now 0 comes out, therefore, inner part of uv, right? But this is 0 because 0 into a real number that is 0, right? But this object is nothing other than uv because the zero vector is same as zero times this vector u where u is of course zero. You understand that? So this zero vector I can write as if you want zero call it theta then this is zero times theta. Okay therefore it comes as zero times theta that is zero. Are you following? So so similarly for v. So we can assume therefore the Okay, this Cauchy Schwarz inequality is true if u is 0 or v is 0. Right? So we assume that u and v are not 0. Right? Okay. 
so now let us try to understand this is one interesting thing therefore i still have to prove modulus u b is less than equal to norm u into norm b right how am i going to prove that okay this is the thing see now i have a digression what is the digression digression is suppose in real number i know addition i had already done that i believe and i also know squaring operation okay that is given any two real numbers i know how to add and given any real number i know how to square now question is can i get x y i think i must have done it earlier but i'm not sure but let us do that but that is very easy because given x and y then i know how to add this and therefore i know how to square it and since i know addition of course i must assume that it okay i also know uh, subtraction etc right and this also i know because it's additive thing therefore additive group therefore i can subtract it but what is this this is x squared x squared will cancel y squared will get cancelled then for this 2xy minus 2x which is 4xy therefore if i divide by 4 i get x do you understand that why i want to say this remember i said the dot product is something like a multiplication for me and okay now you want to say something about u dot b is less than equal to without modulus itself norm of u into norm of b right and remember okay this is modulus right therefore this is this happens if only if u dot b squared is less than equal to norm u squared into norm b squared right this happens if only if this happens right now remember right i am using that right okay then therefore given u i know what is u squared given v u squared by that i mean u dot u and i know something when given v i know what is v squared which is v dot v then i want u dot v so what do you think i should do i should add u plus v and then take dot product right because u dot v squared you have follow that it's just a mnemonic to make you understand why certain things are happening because next time also you should use this kind of analogy very simple kind of thing which makes you understand and makes you wonder whether you can try the same trick okay otherwise you just have to memorize everything okay and you cannot find anything new okay so and remember it's also we also have this, all these things that come from v which is a vector space therefore what i want to look at is u plus t v and u plus t v where t is a real number notice that this this is the same vector therefore this will be greater than or equal to zero but what is this by now you should know from the last lecture we spent a lot of time u u that is u squared plus u into t v t comes out therefore u v and then t v into u t comes out therefore it's v into u plus t v t v that is t squared v v that is t squared v dot v right but by symmetry this comes as inner product u u plus 2 t times u v plus t squared times v v you follow that yeah very good now notice that this is nothing other than norm u squared plus 2 t times u v plus this is t squared times norm b squared see we got all the things in hand now right this is true for every t are you following remember again if you have gone through my many lectures whenever there is a hypothesis which says for every element something is true in the proof you have to choose that element very specifically okay you have to make an intelligent smart choice of that element so that you can exploit the hypothesis this is a, another trick which i had in many times I informed okay so this is true for all t can i choose can i choose t smartly intelligently right notice that here you see this t 
okay i want to say something with uv whole squared right so one way may be this is already there you see norm v squared norm u squared are there but i have only inner part uv as a single term but i want a square term so one choice may be i should use t as uv itself yeah are you following okay but then remember this is t therefore i can choose as a minus sign okay that's because you will see that is going to give me because what do i want this is greater than or equal to zero you understand this object is greater than or equal to zero therefore if this comes with a something a negative sign i can push it to the other side are you following see everywhere we are thinking whereas you simply verify the teacher writes you see that is correct why i chose minus sign is for this reason do you understand that therefore i can choose u okay minus inner part it uv therefore i get a square there and this square what do i get i have inner product uv whole squared by norm b squared yeah but there is something i can do much better okay i will show you why i want to do that okay this one i choose by norm b squared because remember i want what do i want i want modulus uv that is sorry uv whole squared is less than or equal to u squared into v squared right u this is v right therefore whereas here there is no v squared they are separate so i want to bring v squared to one side therefore what do i do i put a v squared when i try right this is greater than or equal to zero therefore when i put to, i can cross multiply v squared completely i keep saying v squared please understand now v squared etc right therefore i choose t you could minus uv by norm v squared therefore the term u plus tv u plus tv becomes norm of u squared minus t squared is norm of uv in there is another norm of uv squared by norm of v to the power 4 right plus right the next one is t squared this t squared is again uv by norm of v to the power 4 this is squared into norm of v squared have you understood this yeah where t equal to this if we don't go back this one right okay now there is a 2 uh, here i forgot that 2 yeah this is there is a 2 i was just <laughs> finding what is happening okay there is a 2 here now you can see these two objects are the same therefore this is this says norm of u squared minus u v whole squared by see this v power 4 get cancel right so what do i do u squared by v power or oh, am i doing something wrong u v by u v right that's a square yeah yeah this is only v squared so there is no v power for this v squared right t is this so i have to multiply by t please remember this is minus 2t times u v that is minus 2 times inner part u v by norm v squared into inner part u v therefore it is minus 2 u v whole squared by norm v squared right so i made a mistake there this v squared right and this is also v squared now therefore what do i get therefore i get for t equal to minus u v by norm of v squared x plus t v x plus t v okay equal to norm of u squared minus 2 u v whole squared by norm of v squared minus u v whole squared t squared right by norm of v to the power 4 remember t is this 
Therefore, it will be proportional to norm of v squared. But this cancel, this cancel. Therefore, what do I get? I get norm of u squared minus u v by norm of v squared. This is greater than or equal to zero because this is always greater than or equal to zero, right? And since norm v is is positive, multiplying by norm v squared both sides, I get norm of u squared into norm of v squared minus u v whole squared is greater than or equal to zero. R Okay, inner part u v in modulus is less than equal to norm u squared into norm v squared. Okay, it's a quite a bit, right? Okay, remember the trick is simple. You simply look at x plus t v, x plus sorry t y, or u plus t v. Sorry, u plus t v, u plus t v. Is positive and choose t equal to minus u v by norm of v squared, where we are assuming u is non-zero, v is also non-zero. In fact, one of them is non-zero is good enough, but anyway, right? And after that, you simplify. After this, simplify, you get the result. Okay, this will be the usual hint for the entire proof. It's very easy manipulation, so you should please take this and stop now and do it now itself, so that you will feel comfortable. Right. There is an important question one can ask. So, sir, do I have to remember this object? Let us look at this. Say, let us look at x plus t v. Okay, calculus comes to a rescue. Choice of t. Let us look at x plus t v, x plus t v. Okay, uh, sorry, I am very sorry. I say u plus t. Okay, u plus t v, u plus t v. Let us say again assume u is not zero and v is not zero. Now this we saw is nothing other than norm of u squared plus two t times inner part u v plus norm of v squared. And to t square. You understand? Call this as a function f of t. Notice that u and v are fixed. Therefore, this is a quadratic polynomial. Right? Therefore, this will be like a parabola. And parabola, if you look at it, will have a, some kind of minimum. Okay? It may not be touching through 0, but I am just drawing like that. It may be like this. So, it has a minimum. As t goes to infinity, Okay, because of t squared term and v is non zero, it goes to infinity. Try to understand if you don't like analysis, okay, ignore, no problem. Okay, I will use that. Okay, now how do I find a minimum of this by calculus test? Look at your prime t. Now, notice that don't be intimidated by norm u squared, so that is a constant for you. Similarly, norm u squared is a constant for you. Inner part u is a constant because u and v are fixed, they are real numbers. Okay, so you should not feel intimidated. It's like something like a squared plus 2t times b plus t squared into c. That's it. So, what is that f dash t? So, this is a constant, therefore, that goes. And next is 2t, that is inner product 2uv plus this norm b squared is a constant. I have to differentiate t squared, which is 2t into norm b squared. Okay, so when what is the critical point? Critical point is f dash t must be zero. Okay, critical point is t naught, right? Therefore, what is that? That means t must be or t naught must be minus u v by norm v squared. So it's a critical point, but how do I know it's a minimum? But okay, as I said, if you have learn your analysis well, this is a quadratic polynomial, okay, with a constant. I mean the coefficient for t squared term is positive, therefore as t goes to plus or minus infinity, it goes to plus infinity. That's why the parabola. Okay. If you don't like analysis, okay, you just believe only in algorithmic checking. Look at f dash t. So this is a constant. Therefore, that's going to be 2 into norm v, which is strictly positive. Therefore, okay, okay, this is for every t in particular f dash t t naught is 2 times norm v, which is positive, therefore. 
T naught is a point of minimum. Beautiful, right? Pause, review, proceed. So we found out you do not remember how to find the T. The T has to be minus inner part of UV by norm V squared. So then you simplify. Please listen to me. This is how you will do in algebra. You will also do in functional analysis. They will simply say take T equal to this or lambda equal to this and check it. It's a trivial verification. But how do we do it? We get it. You saw the beauty. How I have to consider X plus T V inner part of X plus T V I am motivated. Why I needed a T, I motivated. Okay. How I chose T, that also I motivated purely algebraically by saying keeping the goal in mind. Good. Notice that I said I have to make a smart choice of T. I said how to choose that also. But if you don't believe in that, then there is a calculus which com comes to your help. Yeah. This is life. Isn't it beautiful? I hope you enjoy. Okay. Very good. So, what you have proved? Forget all this thing. So, we have proved, okay, for any UV in inner product space, inner product UV modulus is less than equal to norm U into norm V. Okay. And the another trade secret is whenever there is an inequality, something like, you know, some expression, less than equal to some other expression, Okay, you should always ask when does the equality hold? Okay, this always has very nice geometric consequences. For example, in the triangle inequality, mod x plus y is less than equal to mod x plus mod y. When does inequality hold? If and only if both x and y are non-negative or both x and y are non-positive. Do you remember that? And similarly, in the arithmetic geometric mean, you have x1 plus x, x n to, okay, to the power 1 by n is less than equal to x1 plus x n by n. These are all positive numbers. When does this happen? If only if all x1 equal to x2 equal to x1, they are all equal. You see that equality case is always very geometric. There is something very interesting happening. This is geometry, right? X plus y modulus is less than equal to norm x mod x plus mod y says x and y should be in the same direction, either positive direction or ne negative direction. That is geometry. And similarly, it says equality. Okay, right? It's always a good question. So now let's look at when does this happen? Okay, go back to this. This is we don't have to put a modulus because it's already greater than or equal to zero, right? When does this hold? So, holds if only if the square holds, right? Modulus x plus y. Are you following me? Yeah, okay. So this holds if only this holds, right? Okay. So let us look at that. How did I get I said x plus t y x plus t y is greater than or equal to zero. And I said this is for the cho smart choice of t naught u v by norm of u into norm of v. Okay, what happened? This happened as norm of x norm of u squared, norm of v squared minus inner product uv whole square right therefore equality holds mean this must be zero right if these are equal then this is zero that means x plus ty must be zero that means this is equal this means i know what is t therefore x minus inner product u v by norm v into v must be zero that therefore i sorry it's u 
I am again writing, I don't know why I have that fixation to x plus ty because of differential geometric idea, okay, but let's not worry about. Yeah, therefore u must be equal to inner product uv by norm v squared into v. This is, I forgot here, this is okay. So, what have you found now? Now, again, you see that something very interesting. Equality holds in Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. I'm very reluctant to write, so my handwriting is <laughs> bad. If and only if one is a scalar multiple of other. Notice that we are saying simply this, but then we know what, not only we know which is, which one is a scalar multiple of which, the second one, and we know the scalar. We know that u has to be inner product uv by norm v squared into v. That is this. Okay. V I, you know, which one? We know. And what is the scalar? Again, we know. Right? This is the importance. Okay. This is usually not written. And and remember, we have proved this under u not and v not equal to 0. But if one of them is 0, we know this is 0. Right? Suppose u is 0, then v is, okay, u is going to be 0 times v. So, that's also true. Or if v is 0, then v is going to be 0 times u. If both are 0, there is no problem. 0 times 0. Right? No problem. So, the result is in the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, equality holds if and only if okay, one vector is a scalar multiple of the other. And most important thing is the proof actually shows which vector is which scalar multiple of the second vector. That is very important. Okay. So, let us go back. So, you can see it is a very beautiful result. And, and usually within 5-10 minutes, this result is proved in any linear algebra course. Simply take u plus t v, take t equal to this and simplify you get it. Even if the teacher works out, within 10 minutes the whole proof can be done. But you saw we took a lot of time, almost an hour to understand why we chose that object u plus t v and why we took inner product with that and why we made a special choice of t. That also I motivated two ways. Okay, keeping the goal in mind, how do I adjust t so that the things come out nicely. Second thing is, in case you are very uncomfortable with that, use calculus and get the proof. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember that and especially remember how I chose the t, go back and do that. Okay, there is one more important thing, but I think when I come to Cauchy-Schwarz inequality for complex inner product spaces, I will explain because I do not want to expand, spend too much time on that. It is already about an hour. That should be enough. Okay. We will meet again. Thank you.